Over on the MacBook Air, let's set up Backblaze. Starting on the Backblaze website, I need to create a new account, which comes with a 15-day free trial. Simply enter your email address and a strong password. Next, the Backblaze app will be downloaded, and we can launch the installer from the Downloads folder. Make sure your correct email address is displayed here, and then click Install Now. That should just take a few seconds, and then Backblaze is going to analyze the Mac's drive. For Backblaze to work properly, we need to give it full disk access in the Security and Privacy System Preference pane. I can do that by clicking the Add button down here, or just drag the app into the list from here in the Applications folder. Now Backblaze is set up and has already begun the initial backup. We can monitor this from the Backblaze System Preference pane. The initial backup can take a long time, depending on how much data is on your drive and how fast your internet connection is. It could take a few days or even a couple weeks. If I remember right, my initial Backblaze backup took over a week. Click the Settings button and we have five tabs to control how Backblaze operates. We can edit the name of the computer being backed up here. And below we can select Connected External Drives to be backed up. So I'll plug in an external drive and it will appear in the list. Check its box and along with the MacBook Air hard drive, it will be backed up to Backblaze. You will only want to back up external drives that you regularly keep connected to the Mac. If a drive has not been attached to your Mac for more than 30 days, Backblaze will stop backing it up. In the Performance tab, we can set a throttle to slow Backblaze down if it's negatively affecting the performance of your internet connection. Usually it's going to be best to keep the automatic throttle on but you can experiment with the manual throttle if needed. Notice that you can also add Wi-Fi networks to not use when backing up. This can prevent you from using a bunch of bandwidth at your local coffee shop or a friend's house. In the Schedule tab, we can back up continuously, only once per day, or only when the Backup Now button is clicked. Continuously or once a day, it's going to get you the best bang for your buck from Backblaze. I've left this on continuously for years now and not had any issues. From the exclusions list, we can manually add folders that we don't want to back up with Backblaze. Also notice that Backblaze excludes a lot of system folders on your Mac. This is because if you need to recover your files from Backblaze, it's going to have to be from a Mac that already has macOS installed. So these base folders are already going to be there. We can also choose to not back up files over a certain size in this menu. From the security pane, we can add an extra layer of security with an optional private encryption key. This key will only be known and kept by you. It will be separate from your Backblaze account password. If you do lose this key, your Backblaze data will not be recoverable. I prefer just to have a strong Backblaze account password. But if you want to assure your backups are as secure as possible, you can activate the private encryption key. And finally, we have the Reports tab that will show us how much of certain types of files are backed up. Switch to the file scheduled for backup, and you can see a running list of every item about to be backed up. Most likely, you'll rarely come in here once Backblaze is set up and running. 
I will occasionally monitor backblaze from the menu bar item up here. This gives us a quick look at what's being backed up. And if your backup is complete, it'll say when the last backup finished. We can jump right back into Backblaze Preferences from here as well. Next, we'll look at the Backblaze file recovery process. 